Ah, well, good morning, folks. Hope everyone is having a bright and shiny day. All right. Um, everybody, please let me know if you do not have audio. Seems like, um, <coughs> seems like I clicked the wrong button this morning. So, um, you didn't have any music. All you had was the happy little piper in uh, Glencoe. Oh, well. Yeah, I slept in a little bit this morning, and, um, of course, I had to jump up and uh, get after it and get on with it. All right. Ah, there we go. All right. And if you would please, those of you that have not already, say hello in the little chat area. Let's see. Welcome Sally, David, Debbie, Robert, Jennifer, Debbie. Already said that, didn't I? <laughs> um, and Camille. That's what I see so far. Looks like we got six viewers watching. Looks like we're um, streaming 2.6K. So it looks like my um, morning Cindy. Looks like my ISP might hang in there just a bit this morning. What do you think? Hmm. Well, fingers crossed. Oop. Down we go, 164 in the red, so hopefully it'll hang in there. What is our topic? Well, <coughs> my daughter gives me our topic this morning, and we had a bit of a discussion about it the other night, and bless her heart she comes up with these wonderful topics and then doesn't want to involve herself in them go figure she's 12 right ah well got a little friend over this weekend she's like i'm not getting up that early in the morning it's 9 30. why wouldn't you want to get up just because you probably stayed up all night but we can thank our daughter for the topic this morning what do you teach your children <laughs> What do we teach our children? And she just kind of blows that out across the living room, you know, topic for church. What do you teach your children? Morning, Michelle. I said, can you elaborate just a little bit? Because that is a wide spectrum of what we teach our children. Some of it's quite scary. Yeah. So, I asked her, I said, well, what do you mean, what do you teach your children? Elaborate. What are you talking about? What do we teach our children in, <coughs> in what aspect? She said, well, religion. I kind of sit back, I said, okay. What have we taught you? Your 12, been old enough to make up your own mind religiously for a few years. I said, what, what in, you know, in your words, what have we taught you? She said, well, you've taught me that religion is politics, spirituality is a way of life, and that kids and people should be allowed to choose their own religion, whether it's uh, pagan, Christian, Jewish, Muslim, atheist, 
agnostic, whatever. <coughs> she said, y'all have always taught us that kids should be allowed to choose their own religion. And she said, you've also taught me that no matter what religion I choose, I should know it, I should live it, and I should at least be educated in that which I'm following. And I'm sitting there, my old pride in my old chest poking up and chest pokes out and I went, you know, yeah. Damn if she didn't listen to something. We won't tell anybody that the kid listened to the parent. Yeah. So, I'm getting wrapped up in my wires. Not too damn many wires. All right. So there we go. What do you teach your children? What did your parents teach you? About religious philosophy. I'm not talking about the ways of life. I'm not talking about uh, to be a good person. I'm talking about what did your parents teach you? Put it in the chat. Inquiring minds want to know. But seriously, what did your parents teach you when it comes to religion? <clears throat> Morning, Sabrina. But when we're being raised and when we're little children, are our parents the only thing that teaches us about religion? Hence the topic, what do we teach our children? What does society teach our children? And that is in of itself the scary part. I mean, I know what I teach my daughter. I know what the family here teach our daughter. And I also know what society teaches our daughter. Because we are fortunate enough that when she does go to church with her little friends, and she does, and she's perfectly welcome too, she does come home and if something is said or something is preached or something is taught that makes her uncomfortable or that she questions, she comes in and she asks us about it. Well, so-and-so said this, the preacher said that, or somebody said this, and, you know, what, what do you think about it? What, you know, what's the right way to handle it? Um... Debbie says uh, she was lucky. Her parents taught her to be tolerant, open-minded, and follow that which felt right to me. And she's absolutely right. Um, I was very close to Debbie's parents, rest their souls. Two very beautiful people kind of took me in as their own. Very open-minded, uh, evenly-tempered individuals. Beautiful people. Um, I think Cindy's posting through his open pagan church she says mother told us at home told us what <coughs> what'd your parents teach you well mine taught me much like Debbie's folks taught her to be educated to be mindful, to be respectful, open-minded, and think before I speak. When I, 
when I did go to Christian churches when I was younger, I was, um, and still am, the type of person I will respectfully go into a church, anybody's church, I don't care, sit in the back pew, keep my mouth shut, and listen. Irregardless of whether I may actually believe in what they're doing or not, that's not what's important. What's important is if I'm going to walk into their house, I'm going to respect their way. Now, I want to say that again. When we lived down south in Liberty, uh, we all gathered up one day and went to one of the Muslim mosques in Houston. Unbelievably beautiful place absolutely beautiful and there is a um, Tibetan temple in Scotland that I've been to before and will be going to again this year when you are when you are in their house you respect their way Sally says, mine, uh, mine made sure that they were at church every time the door was open. <coughs> Never felt right to her. Uh, she says, I teach my girls about it all and to learn as much as possible about all religions and respect and people and belief, no matter how different it is to learn. Well put. And you know what I find? I can't speak, I can't speak for all. Now, that was Sabrina said. Sally up above it. Church never felt right for her. Sabrina said uh, they were in church every time the door was open. And it's interesting. I've met Sabrina's mom, spent a lot of time talking to the lady. A uh, very nice lady, very open-minded in her older years. I would imagine in her younger years, boy, she was a she was a force to be reckoned with. But anyway, something I have found is in most pagan households, not all, but most pagan households, we teach our children a more open-minded philosophical way of thinking. We teach our children to be open-minded. We teach them to, when you are in someone else's spiritual home, such as their church, their mosque, their temple, whatever they call it, their circle, keep your mouth shut. Be respectful. Listen. You might learn something. And see, that's always been that's always been my philosophy. Is I have studied uh, religions of one kind or another for wow over thirty something years now, and I have always found that there are bits and pieces of each religion that tend to spawn off of other religions. And we all know that modern day Christianity spawned way long ago off of various pagan philosophies and ideologies. And that's fine. I don't I don't have a problem with that one way or the other. Morning, Sean. But I do know that what we teach our children is highly important. Society teaches our kids to be tolerant when it's acceptable to them. 
society teaches our kids to accept people as they are when it's convenient. Society teaches our kids to dislike things that they don't understand. Society teaches our kids to hate things that are different. It's sad, but it's true. If you listen to the things that kids come back from school with, some of it's quite scary, really. <clears throat> I mean, seriously. Some of the things that kids come back from school with are just outright scary. And when we're looking at our kids growing up, the mini-me's, if you will, God has helped the world with a mini-me anywhere. But there are several things that I've always believed. And that is, once something is said, it cannot be unsaid. Apologies can be made right enough. Once something is done, it cannot be undone. So once something is said or done to or around or near within earshot or eye shot of children, it cannot be unsaid or undone. So, if our children are in eye shot and earshot of our anger management issues, that teaches our children to handle things with anger. If our children are in eye shot or ear shot of bigoted, discriminatory comments, statements, and actions, our children are going to watch what we do and they're going to watch what we say more than they're going to watch what we tell them. And yes, I'll own it. There are some things I tell my daughter. Do as I say, don't do as I do. And say as I say, don't say as I say. Say, don't, don't say, don't say, 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 say. Do not say the things I say, say what I tell you to say. To which she looks at me and says, Right, Dad. Right. Got it. Then I sit and listen to her talking to her little friends. And next thing I know, the very words are coming out of her mouth are the very words that have come out of my mouth. And I'm going, oh, hell. Here we go. Error. Yes, and then Camille looks at me and says, you really don't need to be doing that. Or she will look at Kaya and she will say, no, don't do that. Children learn by example. Michelle, you're absolutely right, and it's the whole point <coughs> that I was just making. Case in point. A quick little story told to us yesterday by our daughter. She can so easily be goaded. Of course, I could too back then. Somebody get in my face. Somebody start talking crap. I'm just going to pap. Well, 
comes by it naturally. Boy was goading her and really giving her a hard time and really talking crap. And she walked up to him and just smacked the shit out of the side of his head. I don't know where she got that from. But I told her, I said, now, we don't need to be doing that at school or on property or during school hours. To which she informed me it wasn't school property, it wasn't at school, and it wasn't during school hours. I'm like, well, slap shit out of him. And, of course, Camille's sitting over there going, no, don't do that. Okay. I'll slap him then. But anyway, what it <coughs> these are the things we teach our kids. Sally says, I was taught children should not be heard. Never really understood that one. We didn't talk when the adults were talking. Been there, <laughs> done that. Of course, I have to say, when I was a kid, mother, unless she was in a major serious conversation, Mother always made time to listen. Of course, I didn't think she did back then. Yeah. Hell, I was a kid. Nobody listened to me. Hell, I'm 56 years old. Nobody listens to me anyway. So I guess I'm still a kid. Nah, still a kid to my parents. I guess I'll always be. But there are times and to kind of reply to what Sally's talking about. I get it. Because there are times when the adults are in a conversation that um, is an important conversation. And the child walks in and generally what we do, depending on the topic of the conversation, we will either stop the topic and um, we will either stop the topic and find out what the child wants, or if it's age appropriate, we'll continue with the topic, and we will we will go from there. And yes, I'm always replying to chats and answers in the background and such. So. If, um, if you have any questions um, and you don't want to put them in the chat area, I get it. If you PM them through Facebook, uh, just a real quick little uh, messenger here. If you PM them in Facebook, I won't see them. I won't even hear them. But if you use Google Hangouts, uh, you can hang out me. Hang out me? Boy, it just doesn't sound right. You can chat me up on Google, and um, I'm happy to answer you because it's easier to pull up. And um, if um, if you want to know what my Google Hangouts is, um, PM me, and after uh, after OPC, I'll gladly give you what my Google Hangouts is. I don't necessarily like to post it in public forum because then I get unscrupulous advertisements but um, if anyone that watches our videos or watches our broadcast later would like to know what my Google Hangouts is PM me on Facebook I'll be glad to share it with you that is by far the easiest way to get in touch with me 24-7 either through Hangouts or text on my cell phone uh, email is the second best Messaging me through Facebook is a crapshoot because I don't always have time to check my messages. 
<coughs> right. Well, we're approaching um, 30 minutes past the hour. And, of course, 30 minutes past our hour, we start at half past the hour. So, there you go. But what we're going to do is we're going to take a pause for the calls, let my voice rest for a minute. And when we come back, we're going to talk about ideas of how we can better communicate with the next generation of children coming up. Because those in our aging group, our children, are going to be the ones that we're going to be handing the earth off to. And we already are. So let's think about ways that we can improve how we teach our children. Uh, we'll be back in a couple of minutes, maybe four or five. So if you need another cup of coffee, uh, need a pause for the calls or whatever, feel free to go right ahead. And we will be back shortly. I like the, of course I like anything Scotland that um, 
shows any kind of picture of the homelands whatsoever. Not that anybody would know that. So, all right, <clears throat> we're back. Open Pagan Church. <clears throat> For those of you that may be joining late, you haven't already figured it out, our topic is how do we teach our children? How do we? How how do you teach your children about religion, spirituality, uh, acceptance of those who are different than ourselves? Yeah. Well, what are some of the things? What are some of the best ways that? We can teach our children um, where do we start well personally I start with listening when even even prior to me being a dad back when I was a stepdad um, I listened listened to the things that the children were saying and also very important listen to the things children don't say What the hell are you talking about, Don? Children don't say... If they don't say something, then there's nothing to worry about. Not necessarily. What are some of the things children don't say? When you're listening to kids talk, what are their... What are their primary topics? What, um, what are some of the things that they talk about a lot? You know, nowadays we see, absolutely, uh, Sally, by example, we're seeing all of these kids nowadays in schools going in and shooting up schools. Were there warning signs? Sometimes, maybe. Were there examples and things that they did growing up that might have been some kind of warning sign? Perhaps. Possibly. We weren't there. We don't know. And I'm not going to pretend to judge. And I didn't bring that up to really actually get into that discussion. But it's something to think about. So in listening to the things that children don't say can be just as important as the things that they do. If we're sending our children off on holiday camps, summer camps, uh, church outings, even pagan church outings, any type of religious establishment church field trips school field trips there's a lot of stuff that happens on school field trips <coughs> remembering back a hundred years ago when yours truly was in school we um, we had some interesting things happen on our school field trips but when your children come back from these things, listen, the first 10 minutes that they walk in the door, or well, run in the door, in most kids' cases, they come flying in the door, right? And, and you're, you're doing what you do, you're puttering around the house, doing whatever it is you do, you know. Stop. Take a moment. 
<clears throat> grab your coffee if you drink coffee, your your soda, whatever, uh, your vape, if you smoke cigarettes, whatever, grab a cigarette. I don't recommend you grab a joint because that's still illegal in most countries, but, ah, well, whatever trips your trigger. But listen. Listen to the things that are said by the child the first ten minutes that they walk in the door. That's the most important time. Because they come flying in the door, they're all excited, and they bled, 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 and then little Johnny said to blah, blah, and little Susie Q slapped the hell out of Susie, whatever, and Jane Doe to blah this, and to blah that, and... <coughs> And amongst all that chaos is some pretty good information. Somewhere. But it's there. And then you can ask the pointed questions. Did you have fun? Oh, well, you done wound it up again. You sit there and you look at the child back from the field trip or back from summer camp or back back from church camp or whatever wherever they went and you say did you have fun hey you don't wound that monkey up again oh yeah we made this and we did that and we swam this and we almost drowned little Susie Q and and we, wait what you almost drowned who why wait, it, no never mind continue and just let them go let them wind themselves down you as a parent, you're going to have to be mentally recording all of this because it's going to be hitting you at 65 gigs per second that your wee little computer brain may or may not can hang on to. I've known some of my, seriously, I've known some of my friends through the years that when their kids would come in from school, they had a tape recorder. No kidding. They had a tape recorder, and they'd hear him coming in. They'd hit record. And they would let the kids just go bat shit crazy for about 10 minutes. Just blah, 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 blah. Wah, wah, wah. You know, uh, Charlie Brown's teacher. That's about what they sound like when they come in the door. And you record this. And then when they have wound themselves down and they just have nothing else to give, good. Good deal. All right, get all your chores done. Um, get all your chores done, stuff, the stuff done that you need to, and go on out and play. <clears throat> then you can hit playback. Playback. That way you can pause and rewind and replay the stuff that comes across as uh, some other type of language. It's an interesting idea. Me, I've never got a recording device anywhere close, so I just kind of have to listen as best as I can and go back later and regurgitate it back and go, what were you talking about? <laughs> right? Believe it or not, doing that actually is teaching by example. It's teaching by listening. Your kids consciously or subconsciously pick up on that the parental figure, be it mom, dad, mom and mom, dad and dad, whatever, the family dynamics is just mom, just dad, whatever. Kids pick up on the family dynamics and they pick up on little nuances and things that we do <clears throat> and things that we don't do. Uh, were we too busy to listen? Were we too busy doing other things or browsing Facebook or or you know, this, this, this always kills me, right? A child is talking to a parent about something very, very important, right? And the parent's doing this while the child's talking.
Uh huh. Yeah. Okay. Yep. That sounds cool. That sounds like fun. What are we teaching the kids? Well, then we want to get angry at our kids when we're sitting there trying to have a conversation with them and they're sitting over there I will not have a conversation with someone that is using their cell phone while I'm trying to have a conversation. Nope, not going to happen. Because to me, that's like trying to have a conversation with someone while they're talking on the phone. Well, number one, it's rude. Number two, it's rude. And number three, it's just downright rude. This right here, this device right here, is an issue we don't listen and it's the same with this thing right here called a keyboard and it's called Facebook Twitter what's the other ones um, oh hell I'd have to look them up so many of them I don't remember But our social network, a zombie making machine. <laughs> I love it. Yep, Debbie says it's a zombie making machine. True enough. But you know, I get it. I do. Um, my livelihood is computers. Digital devices, mobile phones, servers, um, tablets. If it's digitally induced, I probably either work on it or have worked on it at one kind or another. But I try very hard when my daughter walks in um, my parents walk in my wife walks in uh, my best friend walks in whatever I try very hard when they come in to either stop what I'm doing or to ask them to hold on just a moment and let me finish what I'm doing and I find that that works real well with my daughter. She knows that when she sticks her head in the office door, if I am on the phone for work, if I have my headsets on and I'm broadcasting, if my headset is on for my cell phone, or if I'm returning a text or a message to someone, she knows that I will ask her, give me just a moment, let me, finish, let me finish this, send, and I will lay it down. I will lay it down and say, okay, sweetheart, what do you need? I do that just as much for me as I do for her because though I can work on five computers at once, chew gum, walk at the same time, text and walk at the same time and not fall into a manhole I cannot for the life of me type and talk at the same time 
because I either end up saying what I'm typing, which is definitely not always a good thing, or I can end up typing what I'm talking, which is <clears throat> can really be a bad thing. So I'm not going to sit here and pretend to try to tell you anyone those of you watching the pre-recorded broadcast later or those of you watching it live I'm not going to pretend to try to tell any of you how to raise your children not my job not my responsibility not my bag but I can tell you that for myself personally Listen, the hardest thing any parent or parental figure can do, the hardest thing any adult can do for any child is to listen. I used to, uh, I used to work as a continuing education teacher for HUD in the fourth war department complexes in Beaumont down in south central Texas and a lot of the people that visited our computer lab were children and I say children 15 16 uh, young to middle teens younger 20s um, teenagers mostly And they never understood, I don't think they understood, why I listened. I could be sitting in my little cubie called an office. It was a um, six foot by eight foot rectangle that called an office. And I would listen to the kids in the lab uh, 50 foot from me. And I'd go in periodically, and I may have to look at one of them and go, do you really think that's a good idea? I mean, I'm not your parent. I'm not going to try to tell you what to do. But I can tell you when you're in this lab, you will conduct yourself with respect. And they like that. They wouldn't admit they like it. But kids want to be disciplined correctly they do kids kids like to be kids like to be disciplined in the formative understanding of respect They want to be understood well, or at least as parents, we can pretend that we understand them, <coughs> but we can listen. Teach our children to respect and be respected, to listen and be listened to. speak directly to your children not at them that that's tough for any parent to do we're all busy uh, kids are busy people parents are busy people we're all very busy individuals trying to do the things we do to make ends meet and make a living So, where do you go from here? What do you teach your kids? And I think we're going to finish up a little early this morning. We're about 20 minutes past the hour. Uh, from the looks of the live feed counter, I think everybody's buggered off and 
started their Sunday, and that's fine. But those of you that watch the pre-recorded program later, put your ideas in there. How were you raised? What were you taught growing up? How were you taught as a child to handle spiritual issues, religious issues? And remember one thing, if nothing else. I always like to give a bit of advice, if you will, in open pagan church. Put it down and listen. Listen to your children. Speak to them, not at them. Respect them and teach them respect. And when it comes to religious and spiritual ideologies, learn with them. If they come in spouting something religious that one of their crazy school chums may have said something to them about this religion or that religion or this is that or that is this, listen. Google it with them. Hey, I've never heard of that. Let's Google it together and see what comes up. Hell, we may learn something. Learn with your kids. They'll respect you more for it. They'll listen to you more as time goes on. Absolutely. So with that, we're going to draw a close to this Sunday's Open Pagan Church. And I'd like for you all to join us this evening, every Sunday evening, at 8 p.m. over on Live with a Shaman right um, you don't know where it's at hashtag live with a shaman hope to see you there thanks again for watching open pagan church have a great day